So have you ever been through a dry season with God? You were once passionate and close with him, but now you just seem like he's so far off, or maybe it's you, I don't know. But have you ever experienced that? It is super hard. I've been there many, many times. The Lord has taught me a handful of ways to minimize the dry seasons and maximize this passionate, thriving relationship with him. And I wanna help you do that. So today we're talking about ingredient number three for a passionate walk with the Lord, and it is a consistent God time. It's harder than you think, so let's get into it. everybody, it is Barrett with Lifestyle Worldwide, BarrettBogan.com, LifestyleUNI.com. You can check them out. So today we are talking about ingredient number three, and that is a thriving, consistent God time. You can call it quiet time, you can call it Bible time, whatever you want to say, but you've got to have a very consistent daily time where it's just you and the Lord. We teach about this in LCA and Lifestyle Catalyst Academy. This is actually one of our core disciplines. We've got six core values and 10 core disciplines. We call them no matter what's. And that means if you're doing these 10 things no matter what in your lifestyle, it could be daily, it could be weekly, it could be monthly, it could be yearly, it could be every decade. And we've got all 10 of them span those different seasons of life. But God time is one of the daily, no matter what, the daily core disciplines that, man, if we for sure, no matter what, are at least doing this, life is full and rich and Jesus is close and you're close to the Lord and we're growing consistently. But I find that in, in my life and so many other people's lives, instead, we sort of go around the mountain time and time again, and we take one step forward and two steps back, and we have this intimate season with the Lord, and then we have this long, crazy dry season, and life doesn't have to be that way. We can have actually a better rhythm of living life with God because we make Him priority enough. And that's when it really gets, gets painful to talk about because... Man, one of the biggest things that I hear from you guys here on, on YouTube, for sure on Instagram and my blog subscribers in uh, emails and even just pastoring people as I've pastored people for t uh, five years specifically as a pastor and led mission trips for over 10 years and done uh, m music ministry and worship and I've, I've been in ministry for almost 20 years now. Um, this, this is the big thing is that how can I how can I stay consistent in the Bible? How can I stay consistent in prayer? Because I, I, I want to spend time with God, but then I just don't. I just walk by the Bible or I just, a lot, a lot of you think, you know, say to me, and I've been here before, you say, I just, ugh, it's just the Bible is boring and I can't really, I don't, I, I don't want to say it's boring, but it is and I just can't really connect or I just don't know how to hear his voice or whatever that might be. And a lot of times it boils down to this big idea of a consistent God time. And like I said, the painful part is God time comes down to priority. Think about it this way. If you're married, you can, you can have a marriage that doesn't spend any time together one-on-one -on -one, and you just sort of do life together. You're shoulder to shoulder facing out and you're working together towards this and, and providing for the family and raising the kids and shoulder to shoulder is great and that's important but you've got to have face to face as well. And that takes prioritizing it. And if that's not a priority, you'll, you'll kind of skate through seasons uh, without it and you'll suffer for it. And eventually you'll just feel like roommates and it sucks. I mean, it just really does. And marriage isn't meant to be that way. It's meant to be shoulder to shoulder and face to face where you are in this loving, thriving relationship where you prefer one another, you want to spend time with that person, you want to learn about them and laugh together and have fun together and bless them and do special things for them and lift them higher and all of those things, help them pursue their dreams for each other. It's mutual and reciprocal. And that's, that's at least God's way of marriage. And so 
it's it's the same it's the same way with our relationship with God. Um, but most marriages don't do that. We don't date. We, we sort of date in the dating season, and in marriage, there's no dating. But it's supposed to be this thing where you enjoy just always forever dating them. And it, it, you're committed for life, but you also just love to go on dates and have that date night specific thing. And that takes priority. It says, it takes, hey, we're gonna do one date night a week and let's schedule it and let's get a babysitter or whatever it takes. I mean, it is priority. Sometimes that's extra budget. It's extra this or that. And um, maybe you go out or maybe it's free or you go on a hike or it's just specific time in the living room on the couch talking to each other face to face about how your heart is doing or whatever it might be. And this specific video isn't about marriage and dating and maybe we'll get there someday. Um, for sure, we're making a course about that actually right now in LCA, um, in Lifestyle Catalyst Academy, one of our courses about, uh, about godly dating and godly marriage and all of that. But right now we're relating it to our relationship with God because Jesus does. He, he uses marriage as a symbol to relate it as well. And so it's the same way in your relationship with God. You don't want to have a you and God relationship that's just shoulder to shoulder going through life and you never have God time as a priority. The Lord has made, made it clear that you're his priority. He gave you the word, he sent Jesus, he sent you his Holy Spirit. I mean, he's doing everything for you and for me. And he, he's knocking on our door and he's right there waiting. And he's, he's gave the, given the prodigal son story that he's a father that is just looking out and searching for us to draw near. And he gave us the scripture in James, draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. He, he gave us the scripture in Jeremiah, call to me and I'll answer you and show you great and unsearchable things you don't know. I mean, he has revealed to us that he is right there and you and I are his priority. It's us that have a problem prioritizing God. And when it comes to God time, this is a absolute fountain of life that will radically uh, increase your intimacy with the Lord if you spend a regular God time every day. And notice I haven't talked about, you just should read your Bible, you should pray. We could have started there, but if it's without the, the motive of love, then it just gets dry in its obligation. And obligation, I mean, yes, the Lord wants us to obey Him, and that's powerful because we need to surrender, and that's, you know, that's where we thrive the most. But He wants to move beyond just obligation and into relationship and love being the motivator. And so, you don't just hear me saying, you should read your Bible, you should pray, pray more, read your Bible more. Those, I mean, you've heard that a million times. But it's important that you understand pray more, read your Bible more within the context of why it's so important and with the motive, with the context of this loving, thriving relationship. And this is what God has given, the gift he's given us to hear him and have that dating God relationship. It is God time. It is praying more. It is reading the Bible more. And as you read this word, as you read his words, you start to hear his spirit and you start to go on dates with the Lord, whether it's just in your room or maybe you are, you go on a hike and you take the Bible and you pray and you maybe you fast or maybe you just read scripture and you talk to the Lord or whatever it might be. Maybe you dance together. I've got a friend that their best memories are cutting vegetables and slicing tomatoes with the Lord because they just invite the Lord into that. Uh, and they, they kind of do that together and they think and they pray and they talk and they listen and the Lord speaks to them doing that. So whatever it is for you, find that specific God time every day. Now here's a couple tips for it. For sure, it could be simple chore daily tasks like cutting vegetables, but you also need to go further than that and spend time in the word. Okay, this is his, this is his life, literally, he has the words of eternal life and he's given them to us. And so this is a fountain of life we need to be pouring into scripture within God time and prayer. Okay, so that's talking to God and it's, and it's praying um, to him. Uh, it's asking him questions. It's listening. It's even praying for others in intercession. I mean, these are things that you can do in God time. You can also do it at home. You can go on a prayer walk, which we've covered in the past. You can kind of check that out. Um, there's lots of resources here on my YouTube channel for how to connect with the Lord in God time. Um, 
but one of the topics that I cover in my ebook, which you can get in the links below, is is why doing God time in the morning is so crucially important. Now, you can do God time whenever, and God is there all day, and we should be praying without ceasing all day, but there's people in scripture that modeled actually going beyond just the prayer without ceasing and going in before the Lord. And so Moses did this in the tent of meeting. Joshua actually even stayed when Moses left and stayed longer with the Lord. David went and sat before the Lord. I mean, it's very, 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 very important to be spending this God time daily, and I recommend in the morning, if you can make that in your schedule. So actually wake up even earlier to spend time with the Lord. I wake up at five every morning to work out because it's a core discipline of mine and it's a core discipline in LCA. We teach you how to do character-based fitness if you want to do that, you don't have to. Um, a lot of people do LCA uh, because they want just the spiritual stuff, but some of them want also the physical stuff and we've got different, different pillars and all of that. The point is, um, I wake up at five to do workout and then after workout I do God time and it's every day. I open the scriptures, I spend time with them, I pray. I mean, it just keeps things so passionate and thriving. Whether I feel him or not, I do this. And most of the time when I stay consistent with it, the dry seasons are much, much shorter because I, I continue to do what I know pours into our relationship. It's the same way in a dating relationship or in marriage. You are going to have this honeymoon phase season where it's so amazing and then there's going to come a day where it seems like you're just shoulder to shoulder roommates um, and the, the intimacy or the connection, the connectedness isn't feeling as close. And the world and, and the enemy and our selfishness is, is going to kind of tell you to say, uh, you know, I don't feel loved. But when you get there, it's a very danger, dangerous place. You don't want to ever stay there. You don't want to ever think that way. You want to think, you know what? We've been shoulder to shoulder so much. We should get face to face so that I can love on my spouse because they might feel the same way I do. You can even ask them, are you feeling this way? Let's go on a date. Let's, let's set aside time specifically for each other. And it's the same way with God. When we get into the, the, the season of saying, God, where are you? Uh, I feel like you're far. That's a little bit like I'm not feeling loved. I'm not get, you've, heard, you've heard people say, I'm not getting fed at this church or whatever it might be. Well, I'm telling you, a thriving relationship with God at home, it won't matter what church you're at because you are there to connect with people and to serve. And you're getting fed by God and his Holy Spirit and his scripture at home and maybe even through like an online program like LCA you're getting you're intentionally being fed because you are feeding on God yourself and it wouldn't matter what church you were at um, now you know you got to take it with a grain of salt because it kind of does matter what church you're at you want to be a part of a godly church and where the Lord calls you and uh, in a thriving spirit-filled Bible believing church and all of those things so those are important um, but the majority of people that are saying, I'm not being fed, mm, sorry, but it's probably a good church and you're just, your heart's in the wrong place. And my heart has been there before as well. But it's time to stop saying things like that and start saying, you know what, Lord, it's not you that's far. It's, it's me that's been far. I need to prioritize you because I know you're prioritizing me. I need to prioritize you. I need to get into God time and I need to get into prayer and, and I need to get into fasting maybe and I need to get into uh, reading scripture more and I need to get a mentor. I need to uh, you know, be equipped. I need to take this seriously because you are the love of my life. And that's, that's really the heart of this whole thing is like I said, not just the shoulds, but the, the why and the how to and and when you, when, not just like, should I be reading more and I should be reading more and I should be praying more, but with the mentality in the heart that's like, God, I want to know you. Like, like Paul was saying, like, I want to know you and the fellowship of your sufferings. And I, I, I haven't even, I have not attained it. I want to press forward because I want to know you. And that should be our hearts as well. And so if that's you and you're struggling in a dry season and you want to get past that and you want to have this thriving relationship with the Lord, then commit to a daily God time. I, I recommend it in the morning. Wake up even earlier. Sacrifice that sleep or that time or whatever it would be and get into a habit of this, literally a calendared habit. 
and because you schedule the things that are most important to you. And so you schedule dates. If, if dating your, your spouse is important, then you schedule it. And yeah, you can do some spontaneous stuff too, but you schedule what's most important. And so we don't want our, our, our schedule to dictate what we do. We want to dictate our schedule by what's most important. Not just urgent, not just what the world does. But if you, if you take this principle, you'll wash a lot of things out of your schedule because it's time for you to be intentional and be in charge and not mastered by just the calendar. You master your calendar by your priorities and what you love and you wrap that thing around the fact that you love the Lord and you want to know Him and you want to walk with Him. And a day without God time is a wasted day. And so there it is, guys. I hope you move from this day forward, uh, putting in your calendar literally what time are you going to have God time? What types of things will you do? What types of things will you not do? Turn your phone off. Go on a walk with the Lord. Bring your scripture. Pray for others. Pray and, and, and present your requests to the Lord. Listen for Him, some of these things. And uh, I promise you, this will go a long way to a thriving, passionate relationship with the Lord where your heart is tuned to His voice and He is speaking to you and you're actually hearing and you're just, it's sensitive and it's lush and it's full of life and it is overflowing and it is a fountain. And that, my friends, is Christianity. That is a relationship with Jesus. It's not one seventh of the week on Sundays going to church. It's not just you should and the do's and don'ts. Christianity is fellowship with the Father, with your maker, with our creator, through Jesus and a daily incredible relationship with him, just like Adam and Eve had in the garden before the fall. That is what he gives us access to. So I hope that you guys take this, move forward with a daily God time. If you want a program that will help you do this and even more, come and join LCA, Lifestyle Catalyst Academy. Our program will help you encounter the Lord and walk with his Holy Spirit more than you ever have before. Overcome struggles and anxieties and fears, knowing your true identity and walking in that. And there's all sorts of courses and scripture memory and prayer and fasting. There's even workout. There's literally tons of stuff there for you to take you further, you, your family, your church, whatever it might be. And there's a free 14 day trial, no matter who you are. So just, uh, you can click the link below. Um, the link for LCA is in the description and you can start your free 14 day trial. See if you love it. If you don't, then just quit within 14 days and you never have to be charged and you just keep learning for free here on, uh, on YouTube. But if you wanna go even further than we're going right now on YouTube and all these videos that I've done, I promise you it takes you a, a well further, um, then, then come check it out. I promise you you'll love it. Join the community. It's, it would be awesome to have you. Awesome. Well, looking forward to growing together with you guys here on uh, YouTube for sure. So if you like this video, hit thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave me a comment below with what is it that you took away from this video the most. And I would love to hear from you. Any questions you have, introduce yourself if you haven't. Let us know where you're from in the world um, because the kingdom of God is vast and it's incredible to just even hear the countries where his people are. So don't forget to do that. Share if you want to bless somebody today. I'm sure they would be super thankful uh, that you gave them this video. And uh, man, see you in the next video. How about it? Awesome. Peace out.